So here we are on road to Kandahar. This is the nighttime version. Daytime version might have been better. Um, each side starts on a different side of this valley. So there's some interesting play as both people crest the hills. There are various rocks and other bits of cover. There's a trench somewhere. Uh, the objective is to retrieve a CD from a laptop. Valid generic infiltration objective. Um, and then to extract further up the road. Simple in principle. Um, the special feature of the map is the airstrike, which is fun and which I've spent a bit of time trying to reproduce. There's the attacker's helicopters going off. So I guess I'm an insurgent. And yeah. I think there is a little underground cave somewhere as well on this map. And there's a trench possibly on both sides. But that comes into play when you get the airstrike. Because you want to be in cover. And uh, it was nicely scripted. Pretty good for a 2000 ish game. The airstrike when it comes will come from somewhere over there, I think. Uh, right, use the compass where it's the objective, over here. There it is. I won't steal it just in case that ends the round. There's a few birds you can shoot. Let's just ignore the fact that the uh, skybox seems to be visible. Um, okay, here it comes. So, I might go find some cover. So during a game you basically want to keep an eye on that bit of the sky. Which means you're not keeping an eye on the enemy. Uh, am I going to have time, I wonder, to get to safety? Okay, that's the sound you get when it's getting a bit hairy. Time to run, I think. So I don't know if that's supposed to be a cluster bomb. There we go. So that is really the uh, gosh, I am somewhat out of breath. The thing that I want to copy because it's basically a bit. It it puts things in the mixer. It's quite fun. Here's where I wanted to be during that moment. But there you go. So that is the original map. All right. Here we are in the Unreal Editor. Um, just to see the the day version, just for completeness. Looks much more horrible than in game. Um, you can see all the magic. Um, so that's where the uh, I don't know the non-insurgents start. And uh, we go over this hill. And there's that trench I jumped into at the end of the last round. Um, bits of cover around. There is this little cave. Nothing particular in there. Just a nice bit of cover. Um, <clears throat> Here is the objective. You get the CD, you then go up the road to the extraction point over here. And the decos are not um, displaying properly in the editor, that's just a thing. Um, and there's a trench on the other side. And that is basically the level. Now, the landscape I've done, as you'll see in a minute, I haven't quite got that right. There's more of a shallow, wider bit of the valley, but I think it'll work all right. So there we go. That's Road to Kandahar Day. So here is where I started with that level. So the main feature is a central valley with hills either side, which have a slope down for the other team to assemble. I thought I might create a larger bit of landscape. Um, to sort of block off the edges, but I thought maybe I'll just um, put in a load of rocks and cliffs to do that. 
less realistic but it means I have to do less terrain and it'll make it more obvious where the play area is. You don't want to have too much terrain that's not part of the play area because it just makes people wander off and get lost and confused. So um, I am using World Machine which is pretty reasonable. I don't think I've touched a tenth of what it can actually do um, but you start with a sort of procedural functional um, process add things in. You start with basic Perlin um, and these things need a bit of tweaking so I want the sort of smooth billowy hills. The default is somewhat more jagged, well random, but let's go back to smooth billowy. Um, so after a lot of tweaking I got that sort of basic landscape. Uh, where am I? There we are. And so oh, looking at the sort of the height map um, it gave me this central valley. So I you know, moved this around till I found roughly what I wanted. I suppose I could have rotated it, that might have been nice. But you know, it, also the shape of that hides the ends a bit. I'll need to do more work on that, but it hides the ends a bit. And this is it in a sort of 3D view. Um, again I've tweaked it. I didn't want it to be too high. And I thought well that's fair enough, but also there's a bit of a gradient on the road, so I want to have that too. So going back to my process, uh, okay I used curves, what did I do them for? To, um, well let's see what they are. I think that was to sort of um, flatten off the top and the bottom, because I want to, f oh, 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 that's lighting, because I wanted the road area to be a bit flatter, also that's how things tend to erode, though I'll come back to that. Um, so that's the curves, and the clamp was to clamp off the bottom to make it flat at the bottom, but I didn't use that in the end. Um, and then I combined that with a gradient, which you see there. So that was with the idea of um, making the road have a gradient. Actually, it doesn't really work, but that's what I've done. So the combined thing, which has flattened off the hills a bit as well, uh, is that. So I'll just go to look at that. So that is the basic landscape I've got. All procedurally done. A lot of tweaking. I haven't shown you the tweaking, but if you get World Machine you can tweak for yourself. Um, and it looks quite flat, but on a bigger scale you've still got locally a fair slope there, and you don't want it to be too mountainous at this scale, because uh, it'll be too much. Uh, and then on top of that I then wanted to erode it a bit to um, just make it more realistic. And that will also flatten things out. So that's the eroded version as opposed to the previous version. So you can see it's taken stuff off the top, but at the bottom it's flattened it out a bit more. I mean, this might be too flat, but you can always change the verticality. You can change the Z scale in Unreal. But that was my basic starting point. So the teams start there the start there and I'll bound it off. I might extend the landscape in Unreal in due course a bit there, a bit there, just to provide a base for the cliffs that's not super straight. Um, and then you can uh, output it in a 16-bit raw file. So uh, I can show you how to import that into Unreal if you want, but that is the result. Um, sorry I'm in the special mode. Uh, to import it you go to landscape, well if there is no landscape in the level uh, do please save. I'll just quickly show you importing the landscape from Red Machine. I'm going to cut. Okay so here I am um, it's given me this wireframe because it's set to this. So you, you choose the height map file which is this raw 16 output from World Machine. Um, 513 by 513 is the maximum size I think. Uh, I think you have to make it for 513, 513 plus 1 in World Machine, but this, this just google it. Um, you can set up the material but I don't yet 
um, the scale I had to tweak so if you do that a bit it's hard to visualize but you can do this after importing it so if you import it you get this the um, the lighting's all wrong so you might want to uh, put a light in all right so typically once you've got your landscape and you build it but here we see I think it's on a very big scale and it's useful to have a something for sizing so this is approximately human sized in the ground branch thing and that's gone off there I think it's the landscape is so big it's basically disappeared so this mm, is on the big side I think so you just tweak it and there's the landscape there's the scale so uh, 200 200 uh, 50 100 60 and it gets a bit tedious you have to use a few tweaks so a lot of mousing around here the result with a bit of tweaking is this landscape so it's a little bigger than most of my levels it's still fairly big but that's I think a similar scale to the infiltration one we've got this central area here which will be tweaked further I might manually push and pull it around a bit and when I'm putting a road down that will conform the landscape to the road uh, I'll have to at this angle it's alright but I'll have to do some blocking off of the horizon uh, I'm hoping to get well I've got some a cliff mesh or two from a marketplace asset it doesn't work in this version of Unreal this is 4.16 so when I get the 4.20 update I will drop the cliffs in but right now that's not my main concern this is a starting point and the next thing to do was to get the airstrike that's if I can't do that there's no point doing the map basically so I've made a few blueprints where to start so I started with the track for the planes to go along. Um, bomber track I've called it and this one is enabled so we'll just see what happens. Um, let me grab this over. So I've got a ton of variables. Uh, the way I've set it up is this this track moves the bomber along it so it takes care of moving the bomber. Um, it's got a spline path which is the key th way of setting the path. Um, you can edit that with the standard edit tools. Um, it's got the noise, it's got things uh, and then also I've got a slightly odd system that I think I'm going to change. It doesn't work terribly well um, where uh, I've defined targets which is another blueprint, the bomb target and this is has this crosshair just for helping you place it on the map so it's obvious what it is and it's got this sort of corridor and when that corridor intersects something going along the spline it will then release a bomb and there's various caveats to that I've got it so you can't release more than so many bombs a second I've got it so you can't bomb a target more than so many times a second and uh, yeah and that tells it where you want the bombs to land so the bombs currently can be guided uh, it's quite hard to get them landing in the right place if they're unguided but that's something you can do with tweaking but yeah so where those corridors intersect the spline bombs get dropped and that's all handled possibly not really sensibly inside the main uh, sort of the, 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 the trail the track bomber track blueprint and then when a bomb's dropped that's a separate blueprint I'm using a placeholder of a car um, all right so that's my bomb and what's possibly interesting is the components I got on these things so the bomber track bomb path has the spline for the path an attached sound for the noise and a mesh for what is in this case uh, also a car or a moped whatever so a mesh which will be a, a jet 
plane at some point. And in their construction, it's not ideally optimized, but I do some housekeeping with the variables. Uh, I set the mesh to be what we ask it to be, which uh, is another car. Um, set up the sound, set up the type of sound, the attenuation, and I don't know if this works, but the idea is that it starts the sound at a random point in the loop. Because if you have two planes side by side, you don't want them to be phasing with each other. Um, what else do we do? We set up the bombs, uh, we place it on the spline, and we set the visibility if it's not moving, if that's what we want. So the visibility is not interesting. Set mover transform. So the main thing we're doing every tick and at the beginning uh, we update the position, I'll show you that elsewhere. And when we have the updated position we have the spline, we have the position along the spline which we ask it for where that is, it tells us where it is. Um, I adjust the rotation because some meshes are not set up the right way around so in this case I'm applying like a 90 degree rotation or something which is you can set that depending on the mesh. Um, that just then says it to set the position of the jet to be that transform. Uh, there's no physics involved, it's just setting the position every tick. Uh, it's doing quite a lot of ticks, so maybe it's not very efficient, but there's not, you know, no more than two of these at a time in the game. Uh, the sound, I'm actually setting the position of that separate to the plane. Because planes go fast, the fact that the sound doesn't appear to come from where the plane is is much more pronounced than with things which are nearby or which are slow. So it's not quite right the maths but it's a reasonable approximation that it says first of all how far away is the plane from the person and then the assumption that it makes which is not correct is that the plane has always been at that distance for the most relevant times. So assuming the plane has stayed at that distance where it is now where would the sound have come from? Well it works out the delay um, so it works out the distance between the, per the player and the plane at the moment it works out the, the delay in seconds and then it goes back along the spline uh, that delay to find out where the, sa where the plane would have been at that delay in the past and that is where it tells the sound to come from so it then positions the sound component at that bit in the past. So that's the clever bit. Um, now I'd like to do this for the bombs also but I haven't quite done it because of the feature that you can't put a delay into a function, not easily anyway, which is kind of odd and kind of annoying um, because otherwise I could really easily do delayed sounds. That is a pain. Um, but anyway, that technique uh, I hope to use elsewhere. Um, Anyway, just a bit of finesse over the usual sort of a thing goes boom, you hear it go boom. It's not like that in real life. So anyway, that's the clever bit of it. A few things happen with housekeeping when it starts and stops. Um, but that's it. And when it hits the... Uh, let's go to the event graph. When it hits a bombing corridor. So is it a bombing corridor? Um, and if it is, it'll start doing this logic. If you tell it not to bomb anything, it won't do anything. Then you check it's got bombs left. Have we dropped a bomb too recently? This is probably a nasty way of doing it, but uh, I store the time and, well, date time is the format. Seems to be the only generally available format for storing time. So I say, how long ago was it dropped? Is it less than our retarget delay? And then it'll update the time if it's OK. You'll check the target's not been attacked too recently, same logic, and then it gets a bit spaghetti. Um, and then I make the bomb appear. And I had a few problems, possibly with the overlap routine being re-entered once the bomb was created. So I've moved a lot of stuff to the spawn thing. So I'm going to jump to the bomb, show you what I mean. Uh, so the target name. I've made it instance editable and exposed on spawn and what that means is that when you spawn the bomb it will appear in this thing here. 
So these things I'm setting at the moment I spawn it because the process of spawning it causes this routine to be re-entered and that causes all sorts of problems. So um, it took me a little while to debug that, but that is essentially the process. So I get all this sorted out. I find the name of the target. This is for debugging purposes. Um, uh, I set the bomb's initial rotation. This might be unnecessary. Um, I think it gets changed the next tick anyway. Um, the target is the location of that crosshair at the bottom of the corridor, so that's used for the guidance. The velocity is set with the current velocity of the plane, which is hacked out of the tangent of the spline. So it's an approximation of the current velocity is the tangent normalised to a unit vector times the bomber speed times the clutch factor. Um, and then the bomb is set off. Uh, and then it takes care of itself. Um, and so the bomb does some things. Uh, really most of the things happen when it blows up. Blows up, I've got a debug path there, prints the name of the target and so on. Um, bit of logic to make sure I don't blow things up twice. It spawns an emitter, which is the explosion particle. Um, I scale it up, that seems to work. This thing's a grenade one, I've just scaled up. I'd like to add more smoke, biliary smoke, to be realistic, but I haven't got around to that yet. That might kill the FPS. Um, play the sound and we're done. Now this is where I would like to delay the sound by this value, which is the appropriate delay, um, but you can't put a delay in a function, so I'll have to move it out of the function, which is really horrible. Uh, so that's the basic system, so let's have a look. I've got two examples, I'll play one after the other. One is a um, low-level flyby, uh, and one is a high-level bombing. And the high-level bombing raid is fairly close to the infiltration level, so I'm quite happy with that. And uh, well, I'll see what you think. But that's the basis of the level. Lots of improvements to be made. Oh, and these things uh, are hacks to create an airburst, because I want these to airburst. So I've got a little thing it overlaps with just above the ground to make the bombs airburst. That means I don't have to make craters. Um, it's purely practical measure. Um, but how to deal with sort of decals and the explosion impact on the ground, that's for a future tutorial once I've figured it out. Okay.